Hi, in this video we're going to look at finding a formula that we're actually going to use to calculate directional derivatives. And in doing that we're going to see a vector that is called the gradient vector. So we'll talk about that. We'll also look at an example calculating a directional derivative. All right, so the idea is that we want to start with some function. I'm going to work with a function of three variables here, f of x, y, z. And that function is differentiable on some open region containing a point P. All right, so just to give some coordinates I can use here for my point P, I just call that point X naught, Y naught, Z naught. And uh, then if we're going to talk about directional derivatives, we also need a direction vector. So since I've got a function of three variables here, then we're going to need a direction vector with three components. So we'll use U for our unit vector. And uh, remember that the notation that we used for the directional derivative in the definition was that we were talking about df ds, so the rate of change of f with respect to arc length. All right, so what we're going to do is think about how we might be at a particular point and use arc length as a parameterization to describe a curve in fact a line going in the direction of our vector u. So we're going to start over here with a line through the point x naught, y naught, z naught in the direction of the vector u. So this should be something you remember from prior work that we've done, how to write the parametric equations for a line in three space through a particular point and along a vector. Since u is a unit vector, this line actually will have an arc length parameterization. So I've got a parameterization here. If I then convert to an arc length parameterization, I will get exactly the same thing since our u is a unit vector. So I'm going to replace my t's here with s to emphasize that I've got an arc length parameterization. All right, so essentially we're just going to use chain rule here to come up with this directional derivative calculation formula. So since I have f as a function of x, y, and z, and x, y, and z are now all written in terms of s, so I've drawn my little chain rule diagram here. Uh, so we assumed that f was a differentiable function and clearly my equations for x, y, and z are differentiable. I can find dx, ds, dy, ds, and dz, ds. So I'm just going to write down the chain rule. So the derivative of f with respect to s would be del f del x times dx ds plus del f del y times dy ds plus del f del z times dz ds. Okay, and uh, we can actually write this as a dot product of two vectors. So my first vector in the dot product would be these partial derivatives of f with respect to x, y, and z. And then the second vector in the dot product would be the vector where I've taken the derivative of x, y, and z with respect to s. Okay, and uh, I have x, y, and z given as functions of s off here to the side. Uh, we started by writing those parametric equations of that line. And so I can actually go ahead and find those derivatives. dx, ds, uh, you can see will just be u1 and dy ds will be u2 and dz ds will be u3. So the second vector in the dot product is really just our unit vector that we started with that told us the direction that we wanted to go. So we can rewrite this directional derivative. I'm going to use the directional derivative notation our book likes to use, duf equals this vector of partial derivatives dot u. So this is what you will most of the time use to calculate directional derivatives. Uh, and in fact, this vector at the front here is an important vector that we will see in some other contexts. So you can write it like this, but we also have a specific name and symbol that we use to denote this vector of partial derivatives here. So if I have a differentiable function f of x, y, z, then we call this vector here the gradient of f. And sometimes we denote that grad f, or we also sometimes use this symbol, which looks like an upside down delta, uh, so it's a triangle f, so we would read that gradient of f. This symbol is sometimes called an uppercase del, it's also called a nabla. Um, so the gradient of f, or del f, 
is defined to be this vector del f del x del f del y del f del z for a function of x, y, and z. If I just have a function of two variables, then I would just have two components there. And uh, we will see this uppercase del uh, or nabla symbol in other contexts too. And so sometimes we see that written that this del symbol is actually a vector of differential operators del, del x, del, del y, and del, del z that can be applied to something else. So we'll see that later uh, in a couple chapters. We'll work with this some more and so we'll come back and look at that some more. But for right now when you see that you're really going to be using that for the gradient vector. So we could also write this formula that we have up here above for the directional derivative of f in the direction of u. We could write that as gradient of f dot u. And I often write it like that just as a shortcut way to write that. Uh, but you just have to remember what the symbols mean. So you have to know what the gradient of f vector is, that it's this vector of partial derivatives right here. Okay, so we're going to talk some more about the gradient vector in a few videos, but for right now I'm going to scroll up and just do an example of a directional derivative using that gradient vector. Okay, so here we have a function f of x, y, and we are asked to find the derivative of that function at a particular point in a particular direction. So it doesn't really say directional derivative here, but the way this question is worded, we're asked to find the derivative of a function in a particular direction. That's what a directional derivative is. So I need to find duf, and then I will evaluate that at this point. So the directional derivative, we can find that by calculating the gradient vector dot u. And once I've found the appropriate derivatives, I can go ahead and plug in my point 5 comma 4. So I could do that before I do the dot product or after I do the dot product. All right, so I'm going to go over here to the side and sort of do some work here to calculate the gradient vector and the u vector, and then we'll go ahead and do the dot product. All right, so the gradient vector is del f del x comma del f del y. So I'm going to find those partial derivatives for this particular function that we're given here. The partial derivative with respect to x is going to require product rule. So I'll have 1 times ln of x minus y plus x times the derivative of ln of x minus y would be 1 over x minus y times 1, so I don't need to write that. Uh, so that's my derivative with respect to x. And when I find the derivative with respect to y, I don't need product rule. Um, we will have the x that will come along out front times the derivative of the natural log function, 1 over x minus y, and then times the derivative of what's inside there, which will be a negative 1. Uh, let me go ahead and clean this all up a little bit here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and evaluate that at the point p. Once I've taken the appropriate derivatives, I can go ahead and plug in that point. I'm going to go ahead and do that before I do the dot product. It's just going to save me a little bit of work on my dot product. All right, so that is the gradient of f evaluated at my point p. Notice I've kept really good habit here of labeling these steps. You're going to have several vectors in this problem, and so it's important that you grab the correct vector when you go ahead and do your calculation. All right, the other vector I need is u, and a really common mistake that students make is they don't double check to make sure that the vector they are given for direction is a unit vector. You need to be careful about that. Our textbook and the homework, sometimes they actually even label it with u, but it's not a unit vector. So it's important that you remember in this directional derivative formula that this is not just any old vector u. Even if it's called u, you need to make sure that you have a unit vector in the direction you want to go. Okay, so the vector we're given is labeled a here. That could be a unit vector, but ours is not. If you check by thinking about the magnitude of the vector a, uh, you realize that that is not a unit vector. So I need to go ahead and calculate my unit vector. I'll do that over here. That's going to be my vector a divided by its magnitude. We've been rescaling vectors to be length one for quite some time now. So. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the directional derivative, which is what I was actually asked about here. All right, so the directional derivative of f in the direction of u, and ours will be evaluated at our point p, is going to be 5, negative 5, and then that vector dotted 
with 1 over square root of 5 comma 2 over square root of 5. Uh, and so it's important to notice that that is a negative derivative. So that tells you that the function outputs are decreasing if we are at this point and we go in the direction of this a vector or our unit vector, which is in the same direction as a. And the units on that rate of decrease, here we're just given an arbitrary function with no particular units or context for what these variables might represent. But the units on that rate of decrease would be in whatever the units of f are, units of output of f, per whatever the units of distance are, or whatever x and y represent, whatever those units are. Okay, so we'll look at another directional derivative example in another video that is um, a little bit more applied, so be sure you watch that one and then try some homework.